this is Charles Folkart, December 15, 2017. I welcome all of you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support of this channel. You know, I sit here just about every morning and uh, watch the sunrise. And as much as I can in the evening, I watch the sunset. So this uh, video is on the flat earth and the sun. And I got to looking at the sun and I noticed it looks smaller to me than what I'm used to seeing so but before we go any further let's go have a look at what Yogi Berra said shall we so I've asked in other videos um, does the sun I'm sorry does the moon look 238,000 miles away to you and the moon's been out uh i can see the moon here it's very clear but this isn't about the moon but i want to tell you the moon doesn't look 238,000 miles away to me and the sun doesn't look 93 million miles away to me and uh, what got me thinking about this uh the whole thing about the sun is that i can actually see the sun here it's compared to when i lived in Kalispell during the winter when you could hardly ever see the sun and you know we have a tendency not to really believe what we see you know that uh, they, that old saying seeing is believing well the powers that be they want us to not believe what we see they want us to believe what they want us to believe they want us to believe the sun's 93 million miles away and we're going to get into that here in a, in a few minutes but i, I wanted to sh show you something on the map here so i got this map at a thrift store for 50 cents it's an atlas actually with all the 50 states it's pretty old but it'll do for now and uh i want to show you that i'm right down here at this corner of nevada i'm right here somewhere right there and so i took the map and here's the arrow pointing to the north and i took my compass and i laid the map down on the on the on the table here and I oriented the map so that I could see, kind of get an idea of where the the sun is in relation to the map. And it is to the east. And so, you know, it is making a circle around the North Pole as far as I know. I can't, I'm not up at the North Pole, but the sun is not 93 million miles away. Number two. The earth is not what's moving. It's the sun that's moving, contrary to what we've been told all our life. And also, a couple things I want to bring up here is that the sun doesn't move any quicker as it moves away from the North Pole and going out to the outer edge of the earth, the Antarctica. And I bring that up because next week, December 21st, is the winter solstice. And that's when the sun gets all the way to its extremity, away from the North Pole, the magnetic north. And I believe the sun and the moon are moving uh, based on m magnetism, electromagnetism. That's another video later. But... I wanted to bring up a number of things here, and I hope I can um, express my thoughts in a way that you will understand them. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the sun looks smaller when there's no m moisture in the air. I'll show you some pictures here in a minute where I was on the beach and I took some photos. And that's what got me thinking about this. The sun here in Nevada, where the air is dry, looks smaller to me. And I remember on the beach in uh, Asia where I was, the Philippines and in Anong Beach, uh, Philippines was the island of uh, Palawan and Ong Nong Beach is on the west side of Thailand and I took pictures and I will 
uh, put these on the screen here in a minute. I started looking into that and I realized that when you take a pencil, I don't know if this is going to work because I haven't tried it yet on the picture. When you, when you take a, a picture of a pencil, uh, it looks, you know, like a picture of a pencil. But then when you put it in the water, it, it looks bigger, right? That, doesn't that look bigger to you? I'm trying to see that. There's a good shot of it. See, the upper half is smaller and the bigger, the lower half is bigger. So when something is in water, it looks bigger. Water tends to magnify objects. And when I thought about that, I realized, well, that's why, that's why the sun looks so much bigger when it was out over the ocean because there's moisture in the air and we're looking through the water, we're looking through the moisture, we're looking through the humidity at the sun over the ocean and the, and the sunsets in uh, Asia, I got to tell you, they're just absolutely magnificent. And when I lived on the west coast of the United States, we'd go out to the beach and watch the sunset from uh, Patrick's Point State Park right there with the redwoods as our background. Just God's, Yahweh's creation is just amazing, isn't it? So I wanted to bring up um, a couple of things. But first, let's go have a look at the pictures of the ocean, shall we? Okay, the first one here is Anong Beach on the west coast of Thailand. And uh, it doesn't really show it in the picture, but I remember that sun is being just huge in the sky. And this is, uh, this picture really doesn't show how beautiful it is there. The water was calm. It was just a beautiful evening. And I had my camera out and I'm glad I took these uh, photos. Here's another photo of the uh, same coast, uh, west coast of Thailand on a on a different beach you see how big the uh, sun looks there because of the clouds and the moisture now this one this better picture was taken in uh, Palawan on the island of Palawan off off the west coast of the Philippines and uh, you can see how big the sun looks there and uh, that's because of the moisture in the air, I believe. Uh, this photo was taken in Bali, Indonesia, and I thought to uh, expand it here. I'm going to zoom in on the sun to give you an idea how big it, it actually looks. And you can see how big the sun actually looks because of all the humidity of the, of the clouds in the sky. And this photo here is one of my favorites of all time here. But let's uh, zoom in and you get an idea how big the sun actually looks. See, the sun there looks huge. Now, this photo was taken in Boracay in the Philippines. And I'm going to zoom in just to give you an idea because the, the photos don't really show how big the sun actually looked. And I remember this is a very beautiful place to watch the sunset there in Boracay. And I don't mean to bore you with my family photo slideshow. Uh, one more time, one last one. Let's uh, zoom in on that sun. And you can see it looks it looked very, very large on the horizon, on the horizontal, on the flat and level sea. Now, I can't show you any pictures of the sunset from here in Nevada where I am in, in this uh, dry air because there's a, there's a big hill here blocking my view. I can see it. Oh, you know what? I could probably take it uh, before it drops down behind or it actually recedes away. It looks like it's dropping down, but actually it's receding away from us. It's perspective, folks. And so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to make it a point to take some uh, pictures, some images of the sun as it recedes, as it heads uh, away from me, my location now. Um, let's go have a look at the idea. I used to think that the sun had to speed up when it got to the outer edges. 
of the Earth as it moved toward Antarctica, and then it slowed down when it was over the North Pole, the uh, magnetic North Pole. That's important. But that's not the case, and I want to bring us to Mr. Thrive and Survive and his video where he explains this. So let's go have a look at that. So here we've got our typical circular azimuthal equatorial flat earth. Again, this is not the model I prefer at the moment. I prefer a rectangle. But I do want to show how the sun does not move any faster in the winter than it does in the summer because in the winter it has to go a much bigger distance, right? A larger circumference than it does in the summer. And if you have one dimensional thinking, you cannot possibly think of how that's possible. This guy says, it's absolutely impossible. I've proved it. All right, let's take a look. Okay, here we've got Big Ben. It's the best example I could use. Let me see if I can get a little closer here. Uh, <laughs> Big Ben is a bad example. Um, in one way, because it's very hard to get colors to show on this when I put overlays on. We'll see that in a minute. I finally got a couple colors uh, that I can show. Uh, here's the hands of a clock. All right, here's the center point. We say, well, you'll see what I say in a minute. Anyway, the clock goes around once per hour. It'll end up back on this time right here, which is 10 of the hour. In one hour, it'll be 10 of the hour. And if you place an object on here, let's go ahead and do that. It would take one hour for this object to go all the way around this outside circle right here, won't it? And come all the way back. It'll take one hour. Let's say this circumference is one meter, one yard. So it takes one hour to come around. Now, what people want to say is that it's traveling faster out here. See, guys, you need to look up. There's a difference between velocity and speed. Don't believe me? Look it up. Big difference between velocity and speed. Big difference. And there's a big difference here with how fast something has to be moving. Just a different way to look at the same concept. So it took one hour for it to go one meter. So it's traveling at one meter per hour, correct? Well, let's add something else to the scenario here. Uh-oh. Now we got a red dot on this inner circle. This is only half a meter in circumference. One meter, half a meter. They're both going to go around and come back in the exact same hour to the exact same point, except this one will travel one meter per hour and this one will travel half a meter per hour. We'll say the circumference of this is half a meter. Half a meter, one meter. They both traveled, although you can mathematically, this is why mathematics can't prove anything. It can only explain. It'll explain how much distance it traveled, but they both go around at the same rate. One revolution per hour. That is the way to look at a lot of things. See, people are already starting to argue this sun-earth thing. Well, if you take the, take the shadow of the moon and you bring it down to the Earth's surface, then it's a different circumference. Oh, please. Rotations in a certain period of time. That's where it's at. Science always wants to give you this miles per hour or meters per second or whatever because it throws you off. Revolutions in a given time per time, revolutions per time are over T. How's that? That is how we need to look at things because the other way is a little bit of sleight of hand. All right, now that you've got that down, let's take a look at this. Now again, guys, I'm not the best animator in the world. Um, imagine the very edges of the ice ring being all negative, all negatively charged. And then you have the edge here, which is on this outer edge, positively charged. So this would constantly be repelled against it, which would keep it moving. So what if you had the sun, which I'm convinced is behind glass anyway, in the same sort of thing I showed you, where it goes between negative and positive, where the different magnetic forces push the sun back and forth, and you go ahead and start it so you can see what I'm saying there. As it goes around, it doesn't matter how far away it is from the uh, equator or the pole, whatever. It's making one revolution every 24 hours. Again, I'm not the best animator. This is going to be a little off. But I think you get the point. The point is revolutions per hour. The sun is not going faster or slower. It's covering more ground, yeah, when it's down here and less ground when it's up here, but isn't it doing one revolution 
Is this thing speeding up and slowing down? No, it's moving at the same rate of speed, whatever that is, every stinking day, right? Yes, it is. Let's show it again. Of course, my animation might be a little off, but you get it. And, of course, as the year goes on, the sun is going to move one direction or the other. depends on where the last part it was repelled from. Not only that, but this where it slows down because the it's starting to feel the force from the negative force that it's, it's exerting. In other words, the negative starting to feel the repelling positive. That's where it slows down. This is where we get at both solstices where we get this. The sun just seems to stick forever at both solstices. And in the middle, the sun moves fast. More on that later. I wanted to make this very simple prove the, the idiots to think they've just got it down, that there's no way this can work on a circle, well, <laughs> to that. Take care, guys. Had to have a little fun today. Bye. I want to thank Mr. Thrive and Survive. He does say that we can use his video as long as we give him credit. And as I've said many times before, I'd like to give credit where credit is due. We learn a lot from other people, and I'm hoping that Perhaps uh, what I share here will also educate uh, you or give you a little bit more information on the flat earth. Let's go have a look at scripture about the sun, shall we? We're in uh, the book of beginnings in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, this is a little bit of an aside, but God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He didn't make one great light and a reflector. So there's some of you out there that take a picture of the, the moon and because the light only shows the light of the sun, you say, is reflecting off of the moon, which proves the moon is round or a spear. And no, because God made two great lights, not one and a reflector. But I wanted to take a look at uh, some of these uh, scripture verses in a little more in-depth. So let's have a look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 15, shall we? I want to draw your attention to this word here, upon, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Uh, you know, God's making this all out of nothing. He's not taking a material. He creates it, the material and the object at all at the same time. And it's so amazing. And he said, let them be for lights. And it was so. That's just uh, simply amazing to me. That's the God that uh, we serve. Anyway, let's look at uh, um, a little more in depth, in uh, detail, this Hebrew H5921, shall we? So H5921, I'm not going to read all that. I'm just going to bring us here to what the word actually means. Above, over, upon, or against, yet always in this last relation with a downward aspect. And that's the point I want to make here. The sun, the um, spinning spirits, they want us to believe the sun is beside the earth. And I don't have 
connection to the internet, so I can't go get one of those pictures to show you, but they always, let me use uh, an object, okay? Because that's the best I can do right now. Hold on. Okay, I've got a radish here that's gonna be the earth, shall, you know, and these are awesome. These taste so good. Look how big that little puppy is, huh? Wow, anyway, it's too early in the morning to, to eat a radish, but later. And then uh, I'm gonna use an onion. And they always show, actually I should use a pear because uh, the uh, expert Neil deGrasse Tyson tells us that the earth is actually pear-shaped. Remember that? What an idiot, huh? Anyway, we got, the, we got the radish and we got the sun here. I'm gonna be played by an onion. And it always shows how the sun, I mean, I'm sorry, the earth is tilted and the sun is beside the earth. And they're going around the sun the earth is going around the sun, and that's how we get the seasons and all that malarkey. But uh, actually, the sun, hold on, I got to get a smaller object because the sun's not as big as we've been told it is, and it's not 93 million miles away. Hold on. Now, now you got to understand, I'm doing this off the cuff here. I just um, didn't think about this at all, and maybe you're going to hold that against me, but. You know, I think the sun is more like a battery and it's grabbing its energy from a dimension outside of the world that we experience. And this is uh, represents the North Pole. And, uh, you know, I know there's, there's not a pencil sticking up out of the North Pole, but actually the battery, the, the, and I charge my batteries with the sun. And I keep my laptop and my phone and a little little small charge on my batteries, the house batteries here. Um, so there's energy coming out of the sun and it is very small in relation to the earth. It's not the other way around like they want us to believe. So the sun is going around the earth as you saw there on the video with Mr. Thrive and Survive. And now if I had a third hand, I'd hold the moon up there too. But uh, God hasn't given me three hands, so you're going to have to imagine that on your own. <laughs> okay, the point here I want to make is that the sun, it says in Scripture, and I go by Scripture. If it, if it doesn't agree with Scripture, there's a problem uh, because Scripture is never wrong. The inspired Word of God, the Hebrew and the Greek, is never wrong above over upon or against yet always in this last relation with a downward aspect the sun and the moon are above us not where did i put the earth hold on it's not beside us the sun is not beside or next to the earth it's above the sun is above the earth. And one last point I want to make. I want to draw your attention to this word here, rule, and to rule over the day and over the night. The sun was to rule over the day and the moon was to rule over the night. And the word rule here is uh, H4910, to have dominion over, to rule over. So... The sun rules over the day and the moon rules over, has dominion over the night. Okay, let's have a re recap. Let's try to put this all together real quickly. Uh, the points I wanted to make was the sun doesn't have to move quicker or doesn't speed up as it moves toward Antarctica, which is our winter in in the united states number two is the reason the sun looks bigger when you're over the ocean or the, the reason the sun looks bigger at some times uh, it's because of the humidity it's because of the moisture in the air things get magnified objects are magnified by water 
The other thing is the sun is above us, not next to us. The sun's moving, not the earth. And the sun has the rule over the earth during the day, and the moon has the rule or dominion over the earth at night. Now, before I leave, I wanted to hit uh, another uh, off topic, but because of my use of the internet and watching uh, videos on my phone, they cut me off on my speed and I went from 4G or f w w down to 2G. And so I can't use the phone uh, to watch videos and for at least another week and a half. The point I want to make of that is, is this at this slower speed, this phone, it, it, all it allowed me to do is look at uh, my emails. And maybe a uh, uh, HTML site with a page, very slow uploading. Very, uh, the point is, this uh, net neutrality vote they had yesterday, if this goes through and they do what I think they're going to do, they're going to make it so expensive for us to be able to use the internet that uh, it's going to really hurt folks because it's it's so slow it's almost not even I don't even use it anymore except for email because uh, it takes forever to load up uh, this thing that happened and you know what it was Trump's guys if I'm not mistaken I'm going to have to look into this a little more but it was those appointed by Trump this is his fault. Uh, there's quite a few people on uh, on the net saying this is Trump's fault, and and remember what I said: Trump's going to be worse than Obongo. Trump is a Jew, and Trump is doing what the Jews want him to do because he's a Jew, and this is not going to be good, folks. I, but you know what? I'm not worried about it. Um, we're going to find out another way, uh, and uh, we are smarter than they are. They're doing everything they possibly can to prevent us from sharing information with one another because in some aspects we are in a losing battle with them, but on other aspects we're kicking their ass, right? We're kicking their ass in a lot of areas, and they're doing everything they possibly can to defeat us, and guess what? In the end, we win. We win. And one last thing, I want to talk about Judge Moore there. He ran for uh, office in uh, Alabama, and he lost. Folks, that election was rigged. They can f flip those votes, and that's well known. If you don't believe me, go have a look. If you don't believe me, do a search for Ty Bold election fraud, uh, vote flipping, they can make it look like it was really close, but my guess is Judge Moore kicked his ass, but they flipped the votes. That was the first time that Alabama has elected a Democrat to the, to the Senate in 25 years, folks. That was rigged. We live in a third world country, and that's why the elections here are rigged, because we're a third world banana empire. And uh, they've... I don't know where this is going to go, but it sure is exciting times to be alive. I want to thank you for watching and thank you for supporting this channel. And may the grace of God, our Father Yahweh, the creator of the level plain earth with the sun and the moon rotating above the earth. He gave us the sun and the moon to rule over the earth. The sun during the day and the moon at night. May his grace be upon us all, for we most certainly need it. See ya.